how Buddha was born, how he founded a religion, and that was not a religion initially, how he got a knowledge, what is his teachings, what is the teaching and the methods of Jainism. Hello student, so I am Dr. Jitendra Kumar. Today we are going to discuss the syllabus of ancient Indian history. In other lectures, we will discuss the syllabus of medieval India and further we will discuss modern world history. Okay. So history is a very important topic. In On this topic, I have already made a video. So here we are just going to discuss the syllabus that what is the main topic that we should read for history. Whenever we go for the history, prelims examination, GS paper 1 or uh, history optional paper. Okay, so this uh, will cover all these three aspects. So whenever we discuss about syllabus, the first important point is that when it is start. Okay, so the first topic of ancient Indian history. So I will show you a map also and on that map I will show you that uh, what is the main dynasty of India was there and what is the main geographical locations of this dynasty. Okay, so how are we going to discuss this here? Yeah, very important point for us. So firstly, uh, let us see the first topic, the first topic of ancient Indian history is, okay, the first topic of ancient Indian history is the sources, okay, ancient Indian history, the first topic of ancient Indian history is sources, sources of ancient Indian history. We you know a student in this topic, we generally discuss that what are the different types of so why sources are important. Sources are very important. Do you know whatever we write history, whatever we read, it should be authentic. See, anyone can write anything, but all things are not history. What is history? The, the only those incidents of history will be called history those have verified through scientific evidence. So evidence transaction, evidence will come from the sources. So that is why sources is very important. There are two types of sources in history. The type one of the sources is called the archaeological sources. It is a archaeological sources and part two of the sources is a literary sources. Okay. Literary Sources. So this is chapter one, the topic one of ancient India. The topic two, the second chapter that is starts that is the early history of India, especially the second chapter of Indian history is a prehistory of India. What is the topic? The second topic is a prehistory of India. Do you know, student? In this topic, we just <coughs> sorry. <coughs> In this topic, we generally discuss about that what is the prehistory. The, the, his, the history is generally divided into the three types. Prehistory, especially when we talk about history, the history is divided into three parts. The part one is prehistory. The history which has no literary resources is prehistory. Then we have the second history is proto-history. The history which has literary sources, but it is not a deciphered. That is a proto-history, such as the history of Indus Valley civilization we have, but it is not, we cannot read the language of Indus Valley civilization, that will be proto-history. And the third category of history is the main history, which has literary sources and which is readable. Okay. So in the pre-history, that is the first one, the free history is divided into three parts. The part one is of the stone age. One sir, stone age. Part two will be of stone age. It will be followed by the copper age and bronze age and copper age. Bronze age and the third will be iron age. Iron age. This stone age is further divided into three parts. The Paleolithic. Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic. Okay. So this is the second chapter. This prehistory of India will start 
in a so let us take it here timeline okay this is a timeline of syllabus okay in this timeline what are we seeing in the timeline the timeline this is start this prehistory of india start in a time of around 5 lakh bc okay it starts in 5 lakh bc so in this timeline this starts in 5 lakh bc this will come up to this time like 5 lakh bc this will come up to around 1000 bc this is the main timeline of chapter 2 prehistory of india okay the third chapter of indian history that comes here will be especially known is of indus valley civilization indus valley civilization dear student especially this topic in the in the indus valley civilization this is a civilization what happened in the earlier time the people were only dependent on a stone the people were only dependent on a stone in the later period apart from a stone the people had copper so what happened the stone plus copper together they will become bronze they will become bronze and this bronze based civilization is called indus valley civilization its time period the roughly time period of indus valley civilization there are three time period one time period is a 3300 bc bc to 1750 bc this is the main time period of indus valley civilization in komyam teen part mein baat kiya this time period one is a pre pre harappan culture that is uh, time period 3300 bc hai na this 300 bc to 2600 bc then it's the mature phase mature phase is 2600 bc to 1900 and then later phase will be 1750 this is a major time period of indus valley civilization okay so this is a chapter 33 in which we discuss that what is the main patterns how it was discovered what is the general feature of indus valley civilization political social economic life of these topics okay so then we for, are followed by the indus valley civilization with the vedic age so the fourth stop chapter of our topic is a vedic period it is a vedic period and this period this vedic period is further divided into two parts this is further divided into two parts and the time period of this vedic period comes after the 1750 bc so time period of the vedic period the time period of the vedic period is 1500 bc to 600 bc this is the main time period okay and this is further divided into two parts this vedic period is further divided into two parts part one is the early vedic period this is the early vedic period coming from 1500 bc to 1000 and then this is from 1000 bc to 600 bc this is a major time of vedic period as i have seen this topic okay in this topic there is a major differences between the early vedic period to the later vedic period in the society the early Vedic period was more egalitarian society, women had more space, there was no social differentiation, much more. But in the later Vedic, the woman lost its importance. In the second part, we discussed the Varna system was more proliferated. Okay. So the society. In the economy, the, society, the early Vedic people were very much pastoral and uh, uh, they were dependent on animals and cows. In the later Vedic period, due to the coming of iron at large number, the agriculture flourished. Okay. In the political system, the early Vedic society, the political feature was very low, Sabha and Samiti were the important. In the later Vedic period, uh, it became more elaborated, Ras word come. So, and in the religion, the Indra god was dominant in the early Vedic period. Whereas the Indra lost importance in the later Vedic period. Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, they become very important in the later Vedic period. So, this is the main thing of Vedic period, okay. So, this will be coming by 600 BC. After this Vedic period, what happened? the next topic will come this is a mahajanban period this is a mahajan period and the mahajanban period the main time period of the mahajanban period is coming after 600 hai na? its time period 600 bc this will go up to 321 bc 
इन दिस महाजन व्रत पीरियड डू नो वाट एपन अर्लियर द सोसाइटी वॉज वेरी मच नेरो माइंडेड है ना इन द वैदिक पीरियड द पीपल वर देयर इन द अर्ली वैदिक पीरियड द पीपल वर सो इन द अर्ली वैदिक पीरियड द पीपल वर हेयर ओन इन दिस रीजन दिस इज अप सिंधु सिंधु रीजन इन द लेटर वैदिक पीरियड द पीपल कम हेयर आई विल सो यूर मैप एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल इन दैट मैप ओके सो वट वी सी इन दिस महाजन वत पीरियड देर वर जनरली सिक्सटीन बिग महाजन पद देर वर सिक्सटीन बिग महाजन पद हेयर एंड देयर सो लेट मी सो यूर मैप हेयर वट यू सी इन द इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन द पीपल वर लिविंग इन दिस एरिया दे वर लिविंग इन दिस एरिया इन द अर्ली वैदिक पीपल द पीपल वर हेयर दे वर सेटल डाउन हेयर बट इन द लेटर वैदिक द पीपल सेटल डाउन हेयर एंड इफ यू सी इन द महाजन वत पीरियड हेयर इज द मेन डिविजन ऑफ इंडियन ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट देर आर सिक्सटीन महाजन पद हेयर Out of this sixteen, the last Mahajan Pad, the last is in the south is the Asmaka. Asmaka is the last one. The other important is Avanti. Here is Avanti. Then we have Kosala. Then we have Magad. Okay. Out of this sixteen Mahajan Pad, Magad Magad become very powerful. It had defeated Kosala. It had defeated Avanti. It had defeated Ang. It had captured Bajji. and by the time of 321 bc especially when dhananand was ruling over this region when dhananand was ruling over this region this all area was captured by one such person one such person okay so this is the main thing we come to know in the sixteen mahajanpa period so in 321 bc what will happen chandragupta maurya will be the one who defeated mahajanpa uh, the very important ruler of the magad that is a uh, dhanan So Dhananand was defeated by uh, Chandragupta Maurya, and then Mauryan dynasty was founded in this topic. Okay, na? So Mauryan dynasty will be founded, and that will be the important topic for us. That will be the chapter seven. So chapter seven will be Mauryan Empire. Chapter seven will be Mauryan Empire. Okay. In this empire, we will discuss what is the main features and the main time period of chapter seven is this one. Okay, na? So main time period of Chapter seven will be uh, especially the time that is one hundred. Sorry, its time period will be three hundred twenty one BC to one eighty five BC. There are total ten kings who had rule over this dynasty, and the first the the important king was Chandragupta Maurya, then followed by Bindusar, then Ashoka. Then we have a Dasarat, and the last ruler is a Bhridhar. Okay, and this empire will decline by the time of 185 BC when the Pushmita Sun had killed this. This is the seventh chapter. Okay, so the sixth chapter of this topic, that is a not a political topic. It is a Buddhism and Jainism. So Buddhism and Jainism will be the sixth chapter of this topic. Buddhism and Jainism. In this, we are going to discuss that. How Buddha was born, how he founded a religion, and that was not a religion initially. How he got a knowledge, what is his teachings, what is the teaching and the methods of Jainism, what is the different division between Buddhism and Jainism. So these are the very important topic. In ancient India, the most important topic is Buddhism and Jainism from our cultural history point of view. And you know that art and culture had been prominent in the ancient Indian history, especially when the prelims point of view come into existence. Okay. So the, uh, this is the sixth chapter, seventh chapter. So now let us go into the chapter eight. So chapter eight will be followed by the another chapter, and in this chapter, the, when the modern empire will be divided, this topic will be called post-modern period. So this will be post-modern period. This especially post-modern period is the period. This is called post-modern because do you know? After the time of this decline, you know, once the modern empire declined, there is no empire, no powerful empire after 185 BC. After 185 BC, and then before 319 AD, when the Gupta Empire was founded. So before this period, there is no powerful state in India, and that is called this period is called post-modern period. In this period, who are ruling? Satavana are one. Then we have Kanwa. Then we have Sunga in the India. In the south we have Pandya, Chera, and Chola. Then in the northwest who are coming? The Kusan, Indo-Greek, then Satyas, and then 
Parthians. These are the people who are coming from the Northwest India. So these are the main 12 dynasties who are ruling over this postmodern period. Okay. So after postmodern period, we will go to Gupta period. Hai na? 319 mein konsa period aega? Gupta period. And that will be after chapter 10. So chapter 10 will be Gupta period. And its time period, the time period of the Gupta period will be <coughs> nearby this one. Okay. So what will be the time period of the, of the Gupta period? So time period of the Gupta period will be 319 AD to 550 AD. 550 AD. And after 550, from 550 AD to 750 AD, this period will be called in the Indian history as a post Gupta period. Okay. So 11 chapter, chapter 11 for us will be post Gupta period. Post Gupta period. All right. In this period, we have Harsvardhan, then we have Vatatata, uh, Vatatata Kingdom, Harsvardhan Kingdom, then we have Chalukyas, then we have Pallavas. Hai na? These are the main rulers of this dynasty that we are going to uh, discuss briefly here. Then we have not written about chapter 9. Okay. So, chapter 9 of this topic, the chapter 9 here, the chapter 9 will be known as Sangram Age. And this will be in the south. Sangram age will be of the chapter 9. Okay. Chapter 9. So what we see in the modern period, here is a map. So you see in the time of uh, uh, Mahajanga period, Mother had captured this region and when Changrupta Maurya will come, he will attack over, he will capture this much region. Bindusar will capture this further region and Asoka will be captured this region. This is the main map of India in the period periods and then these are the Pandya, Chera and Chola. In the Gupta period, if you see the map, Guptas were ruling over these regions of India. They were ruling over these regions of India and this is the main uh, area which is captured by Gupta. Okay. And after Gupta will decline, this is a major division especially in this time, postmodern period and Gupta period. I hope you understood the topic and then we will uh, bring a new video on the topic of the syllabus of medieval Indian history and modern Indian history. Also, please feel free to comment on the below link and I will be making videos on the different topics of Indian and the world history, whatever is required by you. So, please feel free to comment anything. Okay. So, we'll see you again. Thank you so much.